Okay, so today we are looking in Calculus 2, Section 8.3. We're going to learn how to go from uh, one fraction and decompose it down into two or more pieces of a fraction. It's called partial fraction decomposition. You may have seen it before in a pre-calculus class. Um, it's kind of a, a fun um, activity to do. Just, I don't know. I mean, it seems kind of silly, but it, it's kind of neat if you, if you think about it. All right. Um, let me go to the laptop, and we're going to look at, say, let me start with a problem, and we'll um, see what we can do with this. So this is called partial fraction decomposition. And I just got my laptop back, so I will be able to have some of this stuff print, or not today's lesson, but the next lesser lesson will be um, in better format so you don't have to write so much. Of course, I'll post these notes like this. Say we wanted to consider this if we were just in like an algebra class. What we would have to do to, um, if we wanted to, to put this, write this as all in one fraction, we would um, need to get a common denominator, right? And so what would our common denominator be? Well, um, it would be the product of the two denominators. So in this case, we would multiply uh, this one by x plus 1 over x plus 1. And this one, we would multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3, right? And so then we would get, this would be 2 times x minus 3. So that would be 2x minus 6, and then plus 3x plus 3, and that would all be divided by the product x minus 3 times x plus 1. And then we could clean up the top, and we would get 5x minus 3 over, and if we wanted, we could multiply out the bottom. That would be x squared, let's see, minus 3x plus 1x, so that's minus 2x minus 3. Okay, so all that tells us is that this expression, 2 over x plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 3, can be written as 5x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. We haven't done anything. We just moved furniture, right? So what happens in this section is if you were asked to work a problem like this, well, that would be... Um, not something that you could just do it if you if you try to do just a u substitution with it wouldn't work you know you have that 5x minus you could do u equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 but then you're you get 2x minus 2 and that wouldn't work for the 5x minus 3 that wouldn't help you so what would be helpful though is if you could then recognize that 5x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3 can be written as 2 over x plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 3. If you recognize that, um, well then, these you can integrate, right? How, what is the integral of that? Good. 2ln x plus 1 plus 3ln x minus 3, and then plus c, right? So the object of this lesson is to learn, and it's really algebra that we're going to learn, how to go from this expression to this expression. We've already learned how to go from 2 over x plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 3 to a single expression. We, under, we learned that in sort of maybe an Algebra 2 class. Now we want to go the other way. So we want to learn how to decompose these. All right. So... Um, what we do is, uh, this is called uh, the method of partial fractions, and um, what we have to do, what we do normally is we look at the denominator and we factor it, and then we are looking for constants, and we call them just like A and B, that will, will, make, will make that work. And the A and B are the undetermined coefficients. So let me um, still work with this problem. With this problem. And 
if you have 5x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3, the first thing that you want to do is factor the denominator. So recognize that you can factor this as x uh, minus 3 times uh, x plus 1. And then it turns out that you want to find co coefficients so that this is equal to a over x minus 3 plus b over x plus 1. And you think about what it is that you would do. Let me, I'm going to switch these. I'm going along with the book. I don't want to get confused. So I'm going to do x plus 1 and x minus 3. Not that it matters. Just. Um, so what you would do normally at this point, is, if you were getting a common denominator, is you would multiply this by x minus 3 over x minus 3, this first one. And this one would be x plus 1 over x plus 1. So you can think of this 5x minus 3 as equal to a times some x minus 3 plus b times some x plus 1. You're just kind of imagining what you would do to get this right-hand side of the equation to, this hand, right, to the left-hand side. And what you would do is you would multiply this one by x, x minus 3 over x minus 3, and you would multiply this one by x plus 1 over x plus 1. And then you can just set your numerators equal to each other. Okay. Then you can go through and um, kind of distribute this out. So you have 5x minus 3 equals ax minus 3a plus bx plus b. And then you can see this is 5x minus 3. If you kind of group the x parts, you'll see that you have a, ax plus bx. So what you can do is you can write this as a plus b onto x, and then you still have the uh, minus 3a plus b. Okay. And then as you look at this expression, you know that a plus b will have to be equal to what? What does a plus b have to be equal to? Well, just looking at it, just kind of look at this right here and look at this part right here. And now tell me, what does A plus B have to be equal to? Yes, it absolutely has to be equal to that coefficient in front of the X, right? Because this is an equal statement right here. So 5 has to be equal to a plus b, because you, you're just going to have, you have 5x's, so this has to be 5x's also. And the number, the constant, negative 3, negative 3a plus b has to be equal to that. Does that make sense? So in the same light, you're going to say that negative 3 has to be equal to this expression, negative 3a plus b. Okay? So you will say that a plus b is equal to 5, and you will also say that negative 3a plus b has to be equal to negative 3. Okay? So we're just, this, just algebra. It's not, it's not that bad. It's kind of fun, actually. All right, now, what method would you like to use to solve this? Because this is a system of equations. We have two equations and two unknowns. You can use the substitution method. You can use the, the addition method or the elimination method. You could graph them. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, but my personal favorite method is the elimination method. I don't, students don't like it as much, but uh, I, I think they don't, they're not as familiar with it. 
But if you were to subtract these two equations, like if you were just to subtract this equation from that one, you would get this negative would distribute through and your b's would cancel. Do you see that? Because you would have b minus b. So you would have a minus negative 3a, which is 4a. And then you have b minus b, which goes away. Your whole idea is you want to eliminate one of the letters. And then you have 5 minus negative 3a, or negative 3, which is just 8. And so you can see that a is equal to 2. And then you can use the substitution method um, back up into the original equation since a plus b equals 5, 2 plus b has to equal 5, so b equals 3. Right? Okay, and so now you have found your coefficients. It's 2 over x plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 3, just like we said in the very beginning. 2 over x plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 3. So um, we see that our original equation, which was 5x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3 can be written as 2 over x plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 3. Okay? So it's kind of fun. Are you guys okay with this elimination method? Yeah, or the addition method? You could also have used the substitution method. Like you could have said b is equal to 5 minus a and plug that into this equation and then solved it. That way works as well. Okay? So I'm going to take um, a, uh, the general description of this method um, in, in, uh, out of the textbook. I have to write it, though, because I don't have my little copy-paste. Um, the first thing that must be true is the degree of f of x must be less than the degree of g of x. Oh. Let me say, uh, when decomposing... Um, a, a rational function which is f of x divided by g of x. The first thing that has to be true is that f of x, the degree of f of x is less than the degree of g of x. Now, what, would happen, what method would you use if it weren't, if it weren't true? If, if f of x was higher degree, what do you do? Yeah, you do long division, right? So we'll look at one like that, if not true. Do uh, long division. Okay, the second thing that has to be true is you, we must be able, and this really limits us, uh, to factor g of x. So, I mean, that makes these problems very cute, you know, because most things in the world don't factor, but if they do factor, then... Um, it's true that any, it says in theory, any polynomial with real co coefficients can be written as the product of real linear factors and real quadratic factors, but they can be really hard to find. Um, we're, we just want, you know, the pretty factors like x plus 3 and x minus 1. We would rather not have the square root of 3x minus pi, you know, and, you know, weird ones. Everything can be factored, but it's kind of tricky. And um, here is the process that we um, use. Okay. All 
All right. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I can take this. Let me. Um, no, I guess I'll just write it. All right. It says let x minus r be a linear factor. of g of x and suppose x minus r to the m is the highest power of x minus <coughs> r that divides g of x. So it could be that it's x minus 5 squared. It doesn't just have to be x minus 5. That's what they're trying to say. You want to think of the highest power. Then um, to factor, to, to this factor, you will assign the sum of m partial fractions. So, for example, you will have the first term, or you can call this one a sub 1, and that's just going to be to x minus r. But then you have to have a second one, a sub 2, and that's going to be to x minus r squared. And then if all the way up, to a sub m, and then this will x minus r to the m. And so you have to do that for each distinct linear factor of g of x. So these can get pretty messy if, if they're really bad. And then you need to look at the quadratic factors. So this was the first step. Step two is if you have a quadratic factor, x squared plus p of x, px plus q, uh, be a quadratic factor, which we didn't have in our example. of um, g of x, and again, you're going to suppose... Your conference is scheduled to end in two minutes. You could minutes. have more than one of them. You could have x squared plus px plus q to the m, like it could be to the third power, and um, b is the highest power. That divides... g of x, and then what you do to this is you assign the sum of n partial fractions or in this case M, because I made it to the M. And this is where you're going to do B sub 1 X plus C over X squared plus PX plus Q. So whatever the quadratic factor is, you have to do a linear factor. And then you have another one, if it's, if it's a second degree, I mean if it's degree 2. And then you have to keep doing that all the way up until you've made it all the way, you know, to the total number for each distinct quadratic factor. 
God, this is, it, it could get really bad. I mean, if you had more than one, I mean, it just, it's, it gets algebraically really messy. But right now, your we're conference kind of is now over. Goodbye. How do we do it in general? So we're imagining kind of the worst case scenario. We'll look at some examples that won't be that bad. bad. Um, what you do then is, this is what we did. We set the original fraction equal to the sum of all these partial fractions. That was your f of x over g of x equal to the sum of all of these. And then you um, clear the resulting equation of the fractions. Of fractions. And arrange the terms in decreasing powers of x. And then you equate the coefficients and solve the resulting equations. So that is, in words, the process that we, that we just did. So um, let's look at a couple of examples. from your textbook. So let's look at an example. Say we want to integrate 2x plus 1 over x squared minus 7x plus 12. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is try and factor our denominator. So we're going to do, we'll do the integration as our last step. So let's just consider 2x plus 1 over x squared minus 7x plus 12. How does that factor in the denominator? Put an x here and an x here. Has to multiply to get positive 12, but add to get negative 7. So that would be x minus 3 and x minus 4, right? Okay, and so then now according to, now it's completely factored. Our denominator is completely factored. So we, we'll write this, and they are linear factors. So we can write this as a over x minus 3 plus, and in the notes up there, I, I would have said, um, well, then I'll say, you could have said a sub 1, but I'm going to say b, b over x minus 4. You have just some co uh, quotient. Okay, and so then once you have it in this form, you imagine what you would do here if you were in Algebra, one, algebra 2 to get a, a common denominator, you would multiply um, this one by x minus 3 over x minus 3, and then this one by x minus 4 over x minus 4. And then your denominators would all be the same, so you could just equate your numerators, and you could write this as 2x plus 1 equals a times x minus 4 plus b times x minus 3. So 2x plus 1 would be equal to ax minus 4a plus bx minus 3b. And then you can, um, the ax and the bx can get together. So you'll have a plus b onto the x, and then we'll just write minus 4a minus 3b. Okay, <clears throat> and then you recognize, you, you equate what you have, what you notice, which is that 2x, 
and a plus bx means that a plus b has to be equal to 2. And you should see that the negative 4a minus 3b has to be equal to 1, because that's all you have left there. So you'll say a plus b equals 2, and then you also have negative 4a minus 3b equals 1. Okay? And then you have some options on how you work this. If I like the elimination method. So what I would do is multiply that top equation by 3 and then add it to the bottom one. And the reason I chose 3 is because when I do 3b minus 3b, the, three, the b's will cancel out. Does that make sense? So this will be 3a minus 4a, which is negative 1a, 3b minus 3b, which is 0, and 6, let's say, yeah, uh, uh, this 3b plus negative 3b, which is 0, and then 6 plus 1, which is 7. So you get that a is equal to negative 7. And then if you know a is negative 7, you can plug that into there. Negative 7 plus b has to equal 2. So you get that b is equal to 9. So that means that we can write 2x plus 1 times x minus 3 over x minus 4, or this 2x plus 1 times over x squared minus 7x plus 12 as uh, negative 7 over x minus 3 plus 9 over x minus 4. So the integral of 2x plus 1 over x squared minus 7x plus 12 dx is equal to uh, the integral of negative 7 over x minus 3 plus 9 over uh, x minus 4 dx. And this now we can fact, I mean we can integrate, this will be negative 7 ln absolute value x minus 3 plus 9 ln absolute value x minus 4 plus c. Does that make sense? A little bit of sense? All right, so it's a kind of a, I don't know, are you guys having fun with that? Or is it kind of like a lot of work? It's kind of a lot of work. Um, the, in the book, in the answer in the back of the book, and I don't know if the computer is going to accept it here, remember that you can think of this as ln x minus 3 to the to the negative 7th power in absolute value, so x minus 3 to the negative 7, plus ln um, oops, x minus 4 to the ninth power, right? And when you have, or actually, right, that'll, uh, however you want to think of this, when you have the product the sum of two, you can think of that as the product. So you can think of this as ln absolute value x minus 3 to the negative 7 times x minus 4 to the ninth. And then you could think of that as ln, since that's a negative exponent, you can think of that as x minus 4 to the ninth over x minus 3 to the seventh. Plus C. I don't know, I, I'm totally cool with this answer right here, but um, when I look at the solution manual, it seems to like this one. So are y'all okay with the logarithm, just doing that with the logarithms? I don't know which one the computer will like. It'll, I don't know. Okay, actually I was even okay with this part right here. I like that answer. Okay, so are you having fun? Yeah, these rock. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try um, a little bit trickier one, like another example. So this will be example two. It's going to be a little trickier. 
because it's going to have quadratics and it's going to have repeated. Uh, or let me just do. Let me see. Uh, I'll, maybe I won't do a too tricky one. Let me try. Let me try this one. Okay, the integral of x plus three over 2x cubed minus 8x dx. All right, so um, what you might want to do then is think of this as x plus 3 over, let's see, I can factor 2x out of that, and I get x squared uh, minus 4, right? And so that in this case, I have both a linear factor and a quadratic factor, except I can factor that some more. I can write this as 2x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Okay, so what I need to think of this is a over 2x plus b over x plus 2 plus c over x minus 2, okay? So um, this x plus 3 is going to be equal to, this one is going to be multiplied by x plus 2 times x minus 2, which is the x squared minus 4. I'm going to think of it that way. This one gets multiplied by x squared minus 4. This one gets multiplied by 2x times x minus 2. And this one gets multiplied by 2x times x plus 2, right? Okay. So this is going to be a times x squared minus 4 plus b times 2x times x minus 2 plus c times 2x times x plus 2. All right, so this is going to be ax squared minus 4a plus, all right, this is 2x squared, so this is going to be 2bx squared, and then minus 4bx, right? And then plus, this will be 2cx squared plus uh, 4cx. Okay, and then you want to group together what you can. So you have this x plus 3 here. You have a plus 2b plus 2c. All of those are on the x squared. Then you have um, a 4c and a minus 4b on the x. So you have plus 4c minus 4b. Those go with the x. And then and then you just have minus 4a. Did that take care of everything? Okay. And so then what you do is you kind of match up your coefficients. What is a plus 2b plus 2c going to be equal to? Good. There's no x squared over here. So you know that a plus 2b plus 2c is equal to 0. What is 4c minus 4b equal to? Yeah, it's going to be equal to the coefficient in front of the x, which is just 1. And then what are you going to do with that negative 4a? That's just going to be equal to 3. All right, so now you have three equations and three unknowns. And this one's going to be fun because you have fractions, and we, everybody loves fractions. But um, you can solve this first one for a, and you can get that a is equal to negative 3 fourths. And then you can plug that into this equation right here. 
So you get negative 3 fourths plus 2b plus 2c equals 0. And I'm going to line these up. I've got negative 4b plus 4c is equal to 1. All right, I'm going to multiply, um, or I'm going to move this 3 fourths over. So this is going to be 2b plus 2c equals 3 fourths. And then in order to eliminate the fraction, I'm going to multiply everything through by 4, just so I don't have to deal with that fraction. So I'm going to get 8b plus 8c equals 12. And so now I have two equations. I have this one and this one. So 8b plus 8c equals 12. Did I mess up? Uh, that should be 3. Well, oh, yes, equals 3. Thank you. Because the 4s cancel there. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, what... What, Beth, what would you guys like to do? To, you're looking now at just these two equations there. What would be the f most fun way to solve them? It's kind of a matter of opinion. You use substitution? Would you? Uh, I'm used to substitution. All right, well, then I'm going to rack your brain and make you think about elimination. I'm going to multiply this by 2 and then add it to that one. That's look fun? Because then I'm going to have negative 8b and positive 8b, which makes 0b. Then I have 8c and 8c, which is 16c, equals 2 plus 3, which is 5. And so I guess I should have done that in black. So this is 16c equals 5. And so c is equal to 5 sixteenths. And so then I can, plug, I can plug this into this equation to get the answer for b. So 4 times 5 sixteenths minus 4b equals 1. So this is 5 fourths. So negative 4b equals 1 minus 5 fourths. So this is negative 4b is equal to, this is um, 4 fourths minus 5 fourths is negative 1 fourth. I'm going to divide by 4, negative. And so I get b equals 1 16th. All right. So um, you come back up here. And so you get negative 3 fourths over 2x plus, um, all right, so negative 3 fourths over 2x plus, and then it's 1 16th over x plus 2 plus, what was c? 5 sixteenths over x minus 2. Okay, and so then just cleaning this up, this is negative 3 over 8x plus 1 over 16 times x plus 2 plus 5 over 16 times x minus 2. And then all you have to do is integrate this, and it's really not that bad. This will be negative 3 eighths ln absolute value of x plus 1 16th ln x plus 2 plus 5 sixteenths ln x minus 2 plus c. And um, see, I, I hope that the computer is okay because I, I think that that's an okay way to leave that one. Um, I don't know whether it will take the answer that way or not. But I would. 
8, negative 3, 8. I mean, we can clean it up. I don't know. I think it, it, it probably will take it. I can't imagine that it's really that honorary. Hopefully it will. Okay. Um, um, so aren't these fun? Should we do another harder one? That one was kind of, that one really wasn't that bad. Um, let's, I mean, it was a lot of algebra. Let's look at, see if we can find a harder one. Okay. Um, how about... Here's, this is example three. And we want to integrate from negative one to zero x cubed dx over x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, well, what do you notice first about this one? You should notice that the numerator is a higher degree than the denominator, so you actually need to do long division first. So let's remember how to do that. We'll put the x cubed in the house, right? And um, we have no x squared, and we have no x's, and we have no number of other cells. All right, so x cubed divided by x squared is just x. So this is going to be x cubed, and then it's minus 2x uh, plus x. And then you draw the line and change the sign on all of these. And so you get 0x cubed, and then you have 2x. This should have been an x squared right there. So you have 2x squared and then no x's. All right. And so then um, that's your remainder. So plus 0x plus 0. So if you do 2x squared, I'm sorry. Uh, and that actually that's just going to be your... Well, you could do, sorry, if you can do 2x squared divided by x squared, which will be 2. So 2 times 2x squared is 2x squared. 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x. And 2 times 1 is 2. So plus 2. And then you draw the line and change your signs. So this will be a minus, this will be a plus, this will be a minus. So this will be 4x minus 2, and that's your remainder. So you're going to write this as the integral from negative 1 to 0 of um, x plus 2. Oh, I messed up right here. 0x minus x, that should have been negative 1x. Were you thinking that? which makes this 3x. So um, x plus 2, and then you have 3x plus 3x minus 2, so plus 3x minus 2 over your um, divisor, which was the x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, this x plus 2, you can just integrate that. So now you just need to deal with this 3x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. So let's come over here. The integral from negative 1 to 0, or wait, let me just decompose this thing. So 3x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. You can think of that as 3x minus 2 over this factors, this actually factors as x minus 1 squared. 
right? Okay, and so this is one where you have a repeated linear factor. And so what you do is you write this as A over X minus 1, but then you have to do B over X minus 1 squared. So if this were cubed, you'd have to have A over X minus 1, B over X minus 1 squared, and C over X minus 1 cubed, right? So whenever you have repeated linear factors, you have to keep going. Okay, now your common denominator is X minus 1 squared. So this A, this one is missing an X minus 1. But this one already has it, so it's not missing anything. You don't have to multiply it by X minus 1 squared or, or anything like that. Okay, so this will be 3X minus 2 equals A times X minus 1 plus B. Are we okay why the B doesn't need anything? Because it's already the same denominator. All right, and so then this is going to be 3x minus 2 equals ax minus a plus b. All right, Brandon, so now what do I do? Your um, ax is your 3x. Right, so that tells us what? What do you mean? Like if the AX and 3X go together, that just means that A is equal to? 3. 3, yes. And then okay. negative A plus B is equal to negative 2. But you already know that A is 3, so that means negative 3 plus B equals negative 2. So B must be equal to 1, right? Okay, so back up to where we were here. Integral from negative 1 to 0, you have the x plus 2, and then you have the a, which was 3, over the x minus 1, plus 1 over x minus 1 squared dx. All right? Okay, now this integrates as x squared over 2 plus 2x plus 3 ln absolute value x minus 1 plus, how does that integrate? Well, you can just do a little u substitution. You can say u is equal to x minus 1, then du is equal to dx. So that's just going to be 1 over u squared, or just u to the negative 2, which you just add 1 to the exponent and put it over it. So it's going to be uh, negative 1 over, I mean, just, yeah, just negative 1 over u, right? Because that'll be the integral of u to the negative 2 du, which is just going to be negative 1 u to the negative 1, which is negative 1 over u. So this integrates as negative 1 over x minus 1, because our u was x minus 1. And we're going to evaluate that between negative 1 and 0. Okay, um, when we plug 0 in, this is 0, this is 0, the ln of 1 is 0, so that's 0 and then you plug 0 in here, you're going to get negative 1 over negative 1, which is 1. This is 1 minus. When we plug negative 1 in, we're going to get 1 half minus 2 plus 3 ln of negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Take the absolute values ln 2 plus, um, this is positive 1 half. Okay, and so then this is going to be 1 minus, here's a 1, minus 2 plus 3 ln 2. 
So when you distribute this negative, the ones will cancel. You'll have 2 minus 3 ln 2 um, as your answer. Okay? Isn't that fun? <laughs> How many sheets of paper was that one, Brandon? One and a half. Did you kill a food? Did you kill some trees with that one? Okay, let's do um, let's do one one more with an um, when we have an irreducible quadratic factor because that's fun too. So let's look at a problem like what example is this? This will be example four. So all of these have been linear. Like we just had the A and the B. We didn't have a, a BX plus C, you know. Okay, so let's do one of those. That'll be fun. Let's do this one. Um, 8X squared plus 8X plus 2 over 4X squared plus 1. Squared. Okay. Okay, now on this one, 4x squared plus 1 won't factor anymore. So that's a quadratic. And it occurs twice. So what you do is you write this. This is how you decompose it. You write it as bx plus c over just the quadratic one time. And then you have to do it again. So you're going to write it like cx uh, or dx plus e over, you could have done ax plus b and cx plus c. I don't know. I just left a out because I was feeling crazy. Um, dx plus e over 4x squared plus 1 squared. So it doesn't matter what letters you pick. It's the fact that because your denominator is quadratic, your numerator has to be linear. It has to have an x in it. Does that make sense? Sort of. Okay. All right. And so now you do your same thing as before. This one's going to need a 4x plus 1. But this one doesn't need anything because it's already good to go. So you're going to say that 8x squared plus 8x plus 2 is equal to bx plus c times 4x plus 1 plus dx plus e. All right. Then you're going to multiply this bad boy out. And you're going to have 4bx squared plus bx plus 4cx plus c plus dx plus e. Okay? And then you're going to group the things that are the same. So the 4bx squared is just going to hang out by itself. But... You've got a bx, a 4cx, and a dx. So you have b plus 4c plus d. Those all are for the x. And then you have a plus c plus e. Okay, and so then what happens? eight x squared and the 4bx squared tells you that 4b has to equal 8, right? And then the um, B plus 4C plus D also has to equal 8 because those are on the X. And then the C plus E has to equal the 2. Okay? So let's see if that helps. 
All right, we know that 4B will equal 8. We know that B plus 4C plus D will equal um, 8 also. And we know that C plus E will equal 2. So this tells us that B is equal to 8 divided by 4, which is 2. And so then we have 2 plus 4C plus D equals 8. So 4C plus D is equal to 6. Ugh. And C plus E is equal to 2. And that's kind of a bummer because we have two equations and three unknowns there. I have to think for a second. Hold on. Oh. Guacamole. All right. Um, I made a mistake. Does anybody know where my mistake is? I was saying, no, never mind. I'm not going to say it. I made a big mistake. I mean, I made a mistake that's going to make me happy. Have you been writing all this down, Brandon? Because you're going to have to erase it all. I would just put a big X on it. Who can find my mistake? <sighs> There's only two of you. Can I give you a hint? It's, it's way up here. <sighs> what should I have done? It was, should have been 4x squared plus 1, and I did 4x plus 1. Do you see that? I was feeling bad because I was feeling like I had too many letters and not enough. I was feeling, I was starting to feel it pretty early, but I was faking it, hoping it would work out. I should have put a squared right there. Ola. So this should have a squared. So that pretty well makes all this stuff um, wrong. So let me just erase it. I'm just modeling how, how much fun you're going to have on your homework. <laughs> I hope I didn't give you too many of these. Okay, so let's try this again. 8x squared plus 8x plus 2 equals 4bx cubed plus bx plus 4cx squared plus c plus dx plus e. Do we all agree? Okay. All right. Now, um, okay. So now uh, I'm going to link this 4bx cubed is all by itself, and the 4cx squared is by itself. But we have a B plus a D on X, and we have a C plus an E. Okay, now there are no cubes, so that tells us that 4B has to equal 0. Now on the squares, this tells us that 4C has to equal 8. And B plus D also has to equal 8. And C plus E has to equal 2. Okay, so this tells us that B equals 0. C equals 2. If B is 0, then D is 8. And if C is 2, then E is 0. Isn't that nice? So um, we should get then back up here 2 over 4x squared plus 1 
and um, 8x over 4x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Okay, so this integral, which was 8x squared plus 8x plus 2, over 4x squared plus 1 quantity squared can be thought of as um, 2 over 4x squared plus 1 plus 8 x over 4x squared plus 1 quantity squared dx. All right. Now, what is this um, antiderivative? Yeah, that's an inverse tangent. So you have 2 times the inverse tangent of um, 2x, right? because that's the u is 2x squared. And then, um, actually, because u is 2x, then du is 2dx, so you already have the 2, so you won't have that 2 there. And then plus this, if you let u equal 4x squared plus 1, then du is equal to 8x dx. So you have 1 over u squared, so this is going to be negative 1 over 4x squared plus 1 plus c. Okay, so this should be, I mean, you know, this is our homework, or this is pretty much, if you, there's some more examples you can look at in the textbook if you, if you want to. There, he actually goes through other ways like there's something called the heavy side method. There's some other methods that you can use if you want to read about those, but the methods that I presented, or the method that I presented works um, all the time. The problem is that you can make like the algebra mistake that I modeled so carefully for you. And then um, if you're not very good at factoring, or if you just, you know, just if you lose, if you mess up on one thing, you know, it kind of messes up the whole thing. So. And in the end, know that these, every single one of these problems is totally cute and made to work out. So if it's not, I mean, you might have fractions. Fractions are okay. But if, if it's really not coming together, like when I was working that one and I could see that I was going to have a letter that wasn't working, I knew that I had made a mistake. So you kind of know that. In reality, um, these are really just Sudoku. This is brainer size. This is serious brainer size. This is not um, real world calculus. But we don't live in the real world. If you want to go to the real world, you have to take an engineering class. We live in math fantasy world. Okay. So anyway, I see you for section eight four. What's section eight four going to be about? Let's see. Trigonometric integrals. Brandon's favorite. Okay. We'll see you.